guys, welcome to the video. My name is Steph. So this is the first one in the new location. Here we go. I still got a bit of work to do here, but now that I've moved in, there's going to be a lot more activity. I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that were put to me as an opener for the very first video in this new spot. So somebody sent me an email and, and uh, I'll just read the title. Video ideas that I think would be very helpful for many newbies. So I'm going to knock these things off and uh, there you go. Okay, number one, as a self-taught programmer, when, when am I ready to start applying for a job? So he says, as a self-taught programmer, when are you ready to start applying for jobs? When, well, I assume, well, we'll talk about web development, but you can kind of extrapolate this in any stack, whether it be mobile development uh, with iOS or Java or Java Spring or whatever. Um, when you're comfortable building something basic, that's when you're ready to start going out there and doing your thing. This is a common question, by the way, a lot of people don't know. And I think one of the, one of the indicators you got to look for is when you find that you can start going into documentations and finding answer documentation for an app, excuse me, for an API, for language, for framework, when you feel comfortable enough or you don't have to be super confident about it, but at least you know that if you go into documentation, you do some Google searches and you're able to discover answers on your own. You are not dependent on a tutorial. It doesn't mean you might have, that does not mean you won't have to ask questions from time to time. That is normal in development. As we've taught so many times, the first three years that you start doing commercial work is when you learn a lot. That's why my number one philosophy of software development, and this is going back 200 years of experience, you learn on a need to nerd basis. There is no programmer in the world who knows everything. There's no programmer in the world who knows more than 3% or 2% of what is out there. The world of software development is vast. There are dozens of programming languages, many different types of databases and database types, many frameworks, many different stacks you can work on, many different uh, deployment models, many different hosting models. You cannot possibly know everything. That's why you have to learn on a need to nerd basis. I've been coding for a long, long time, uh, cumulatively, uh, well, since the 90s, and I can tell you that I've now forgotten much more than I currently remember. But if you know your fundamentals, which don't change over time, I'm telling you now, it does, they, they do not change over time, you will be fine. Next question, what should my portfolio site include? It should include, first and foremost, right at the top, what projects you've done. That's why I always tell people, once you've done your fundamentals, then you go straight into building little projects as stage work, meaning do one or two for free to develop some skills building real world projects. Doing tutorials is like riding a tricycle with training wheels versus doing the real thing, doing a real job. Even if you're not getting paid for it, that's like getting on a real bike and pedaling on your own. You have to stop getting on the tricycle, the tutorial tricycle. You gotta get away from that. You gotta get into the real world. I know it's a leap to take that leap, to jump into it, but you can do it. And it's so important because you're gonna learn so much faster. Next question. Commonly, what kind of tasks do newbie programmers do in their first job? E.g., for well, example, code from scratch or edit existing code. It really depends. It really depends on um, where you are. You might find yourself doing a bit of both. I found myself doing both, actually. Um, you know, I started off with small jobs, adding to existing code bases, and then I started developing things from scratch. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as uh, you have your fundamentals, you'll be able to work your way through it. I, don't doubt that because I've done it and I've taught many, 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 many people over the years and they do the exact same thing. 
Next question, what employers want to see from an inexperienced applicant? Good fundamental knowledge, a couple of projects that you can show that you did, not tutorials, but real projects, working with real clients, deeply important. Good communication skills, that's number three, good communication skills, written, verbal, etc. And uh, say what you do and do what you say. If you say you're going to make, you're going to get this thing out by Friday, you get it out by Friday. Right. If uh, you say you're going to show up at nine, you show up at nine. Uh, dependability and consistency are so important not to be underestimated. These are skills, by the way, that are universal across no matter what you do. OK. Next question. Everything that clears out the concept of getting proficient enough for employment. And how is the work actually going to be like? I'm not sure if I understand that sentence. Let me try it again. Everything that clears out the concept of getting proficient enough for employment and how is the actual, how is the work actually going to be like? The work is going to be a lot of debugging. That is normal in software development. You spend a lot of time debugging. That's why when you do write your code, make sure your code is super simple, super simple, super modular and fine-grained, meaning you don't have super complex, hard to understand architectures or functions or methods. Make sure everything is self-describing. The code has to be self-describing. What does that mean? When you write a, a, a variable name, variables should actually represent what it holds. Now, if you don't know, a variable is uh, something in, program that you, in programming that you use to hold information. It's like a container you put information in. And you name variables. So a variable might be first name. And in that variable first name, you could keep, let's say, uh, how many eggs somebody bought. See, that would be stupid. What you would actually do is actually hold the person's first name, right? You might have another variable called last name. And what would you have in there? Ah, you would have the person's height. You would say how tall they are in the variable last name. No, you would put what their last name is. Even better, when you're naming, you're making your variables, you would start with the, the, uh, the lowest case, the lowest common denominator, if you will, of the concept, and you move into specificity. So you go broad to specific. Let me explain that. So instead of calling a variable one first name, variable two last name, you would call variable one name, la, name underscore first, or name dash first, Second variable, name dash last. Why? It categorizes things. Anyway, I won't get into it. I teach all this in my courses. The point is, by having just proper naming in your variables and your methods and your functions, so on and so forth, by structuring your code in a way that's very easy to read and understand. So if I'm looking at a variable, which to remind you are containers of information, I see, oh, name first, name last. I don't have to think about it. I know what that variable is. If I have a function or a method, I would name the function or method after what that does. So it might be uh, validate email, right? Or so it might be, so you would call it validate email, right? So it makes sense. This seems simple, kind of stupid perhaps, but let me tell you, there's, I have run across tons and tons of functions and, and method names and variable names and code bases which have nothing to do or are very cryptic in terms of what they actually, what their purpose is. So you don't want to do that. Anyway, I've got off on one of my tangents. So there you go, guys. And that is the first video. I've answered a bunch of questions here that uh, somebody put to me. I hope it's useful. Uh, my goal on this channel is not only here to teach you real world development, but teach you the business of development, understand what employers are looking for, how to get a job, how to advance in the job, how to start freelancing, how to build your freelance business, and how to take that code and monetize it, become a startup founder. I've had a few big ones, a couple of them raised tens of millions of dollars. So uh, that is the difference. If you want tutorials on Node or Django or Flask, that's cool. There's 10,000 out there. If you want to learn from somebody who's been in the game for hundreds of years, that's what I do. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.